Hi there. Let's have a look at the much requested Clash of the Titans game between Stockfish playing white, Leela playing with the black pieces, the opening scenery set. This is E4, C5, Sicilian defence. So TSEC, Season 19, Premier Division, Round 44. We have Knight C6 being played here. D4, C takes, Knight takes D4, G6. This is known quite often as the Accelerated Dragon or the Accelerated Fianchetto. And if you're wondering, what about G6 earlier, just for your own trivia information? Here is the Hyper Accelerated Dragon. And in both cases, there's the possibility that White, because White is being left alone without a threat to handle, can play the dreaded Moroxy Bind. So let's go back to our game, which is an accelerated dragon, not a hyper accelerated dragon. And white did actually play c4. So this is a critical test of the accelerated dragon, or accelerated fianchetto, if you prefer to call it that. We have bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, knight c3, queen a5. The queen is hit. The queen goes back, end of book. Fascinating start position. Okay, Stockfish, in its own thinking now, plays bishop e2. We see d6. Both sides castle. And we see h3. This is a variance from the choice of Leela in the return match, which saw rook e1. And the game continued like this with a dynamic offering on e6 and eventually stockfish managed to draw with the black pieces so very interesting game there so what happened in this game after h3 let's see so b6 was played queen d2 bishop b7 rook a d1 so there's this dreaded moroxy bind this binds on the d5 square also b5 is kind of a bind so when we say about binding, it's about the pawn breaks liberating the pieces. White well, has this kind of Vulcan grip on the position here, on d5. We see rook c8. This is a favourite quite often of Magnus Carlsen against Sicilians and Michael Adams. Very positional super GMs. Really kind of enjoy the rock bind. We have bishop h6. We have knight e5. And here now, bishop takes g7, king takes, and queen d4 protecting c4. We have g5. This is a bit of a weakening move, it seems, to humanize g5. And one might suspect, if you play g5 with a g4 follow-up, you are fragmenting a little bit your pawn structure as well. But if knight c6, here's a snag. Queen e3, what is black actually doing here? On knight e5, maybe knight d2 now, and then kicking the knight back. And this is going to be kind of pleasant for white after b4. So, okay, a little bit of a provocation here to play g5. It is weakening a bit the light squares. We do have knight d2 now, rook g8. So Lula is playing kind of aggressively with the black pieces. It looks as though... There are crude intentions afoot to open a road to the king. We have knight d5, bishop takes, e takes. So with this, white is getting the e-file potentially to play with. Queen d7, rook e1. And now we have king f8. Knight f1, which gives the idea that maybe this knight's heading to at least pressurize these light squares that have been weakened. Queen f5, b3, queen f4, and the queen actually retracts here. doesn't really want to take on f4 just then. And we have g4, and it's here, rook d4, forcing the queen out of f4, away from f4. h takes, so inflicting some structural damage. There is an isolated h-pawn here, and it's here that White elects queen d5. So ex wanting the exchange of queens here. 
we have h5. If queen takes d2 as an example, rook takes. This position seems pleasant enough for white. So h5, we have the queens coming off. f3, knight h6. Bishop d3, b5. If b5 isn't played, as another example, knight f5, white well, could probably just take and knight e3, holding a solid position. And to follow this through, if the rook's on e5, it's a bit precarious, actually, you know, for f4. This kind of thing could be a disaster scenario, as an example, but black's not forced to do that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, rook e5 is a bit of a dodgy move, perhaps. So, anyway, let's go back. And after bishop d3, here, if king g8, by the way, then just rook takes e7. So there, there are limited choices for black. This e file pressure is being felt here by black already. Uh, so we have actually b5. It's an energetic try, it seems. We have f4 now, and the rook goes to g8. C takes, rook c5. Rook e3. So very interesting position here, rook e3, this rook left. It looks as though the isolated h-pawn is becoming a target in some of the lines now. Knight hg4 is played. If knight takes d5, in fact, can you see what white could play here, which is leading to a big advantage for white? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, white can play the forcing b4, it's annoying. It is forcing matters. And if knight takes, b takes, for example, this is uh, good for white. Well, there's a piece up. So, yes, very good for white. And if, you know, if, if white doesn't play uh, b4, then black's going to be absolutely fine with e6. So b4 is actually a kind of much needed move here, but sufficient for an advantage. So rook e3, knight hg4, we have rook h3, rook h8. If knight takes d5 at this point, then b4 again is horrible for black. If e5 is the best, that's not particularly great because white has a fantastic position after rook a3, for example, and the rook is embarrassingly irrelevant to a7 here. And instead, if we looked at rook takes d5, by the way, then rook a4, and again, a7 is a big target. Uh, so that's going to be very good. And in fact, white can actually reinforce that pawn and use this trick, knight e3, to get the knight over there. So for example, like this is the advantage. And the b3 pawn, in case you're wondering, is immune because of knight f5 check. Look at the effect of the whole position opening up the rook. So winning the rook after. So yeah, it's it's a bit tricky. So knight takes d5 is seems out of the question. So rook h8. We have rook f3, king g7, bishop c4, rook hc8, rook fd3, knight h6, rook h3, e6, d takes. You might think, well, this is another radical pawn move, isn't it? e6 you know white white e6 interesting uh what else is black doing here though it's a bit of a bind a bit of a moroxy bind this position uh so yeah um white can just be improving the position uh, position soon if e6 isn't played so e6 we have d takes Actually, I do have something to show you. Instead of e6, if knight f5 attacking the rook, let's ask this question at least. Rook d1, e6, and white could try and simplify using you know that h pawn as an excuse to simplify. If we reach this scenario with d takes there, then white's going to be better here as well. Uh, it's just these pawns are sometimes dangerous, and white's getting an advantage here. 
with A4. You can see that you know there's a dangerous pass pawn emerging on that side of the board. So anyway, so e6, d takes, knight f5 here, d5. This is slightly different then. Bishop d3, f takes, b4. The rook goes back. Pardon me, stop fiddling. So bishop takes f5 was played simplifying and it's fragmentation you know the, the black pawns Lira is on the uh, receiving end of pawn fragmentation in this game against Stockfish and N how things have changed Lila is usually the master of pawn structure but here is pretty diced up with a load of potentially vulnerable pawns yeah fascinating position uh, rook a3 that a7 is a bit of an Achilles heel it seems Rook f7, knight e3, now d5 and f5 are both hit. Pretty nasty looking. We have knight g4, rook a d3, ganging up on d5, given that the knight has neglected d5. Knight takes further simplification provoked. a3 protecting b4, but offering f4. Okay, so we're back to four pawns each after this f4 offering, but rook e5. King f6. This pawn doesn't seem to be going places after d4, for example, rook d5. So it's offered back. So again, white is a pawn up. Now rook c5, rook h7. Clearly, well, not clearly, I'll just show you. If rook takes c5, uh, this position a4 is crushing because of b6. The two connected pass pawns are crashing through. So uh, rook h7, we have another forced simplification here and this rook and pawn ending is very nice for white so in this position black plays king g5 trying to push through with h4 there we have a4 h4 king e2 rook e7 king f2 rook d7 king f3 check rook king e2 rook g3 and here uh, we have king f2 protecting the pawn, rook d3, rook c7. Yeah, this is getting difficult for, for black now after rook c7. Because remember, these are double pawns, so losing one of the double pawns is not such a big deal. So, you know, why did black, uh, you know, <laughs> it seems black's being outplayed here, basically. It must have been going downhill anyway. So rook d d4 this this just looks bad now even worse uh, from human eyes i would say king f3 check king e2 f4 rook a8 king g4 check king f5 rook b8 king e4 b6 check king e3 threatening checkmate very cheeky check a5, yeah, the two connected pass pawns for white look ominous. So f3, g takes, h3, rook h8, h2, b7, king e3, threatening checkmate, but actually black resigned as well. It is actually hopelessly uh, lost here. Uh, so why has the evaluations gone so sky high? Why does Leela have to resign? And congratulations to the Stockfish team. You know, for evolving stockfish to NN. So I knew it all along that neural networks would be the thing. I just didn't know stockfish uh, would eventually use the technology itself to strengthen itself. So congratulations to the fabulous stockfish team. And it is my primary analysis tool when, when looking at these games. It is CPU friendly. It, that's the big thing about stockfish as the an analysis tool of choice. I do love Leela's outlook on positions though. And I recommend you know using both if you can especially if you've got a nice you know graphics card so the battle of the titans here so anyway why did this why is this lost if rook if king d1 avoiding the checkmate king d3 king c1 and this happens this is a winning end game for white technically so as an example, this is just an example, rook h2, rook c2, that cuts the king off, the black king. 
and white can make progress now for example like this with both pawns uh, kind of making more and more progress in the position it's uh, gonna be very difficult for black to hold on here that's just a fictional continuation okay my trivia question to you guys today by the way is do you prefer cats or dogs and if you have time you know elaborate so do you prefer cats or dogs maybe that's kind of a fun one in relation to this video it's like they're the two top pets these are the two top chess engines it kind of aligns doesn't it <laughs> to this video okay so yeah do you prefer cats or dogs you might not even own a cat or a dog just you know in theory do you prefer cats or dogs okay um anyway also by the way uh what what are the philosophical points about this game indeed it seems by the evidence evidence of this game the Moroxy bind is still a great test of these accelerated fianchetto systems either the hyper accelerated dragon or the uh, accelerated dragon allow white to set up the dreaded Moroxy bind it seems leader of the black side against the Moroxy bind did try and hit the bind with uh, b5 at a certain point white grabbed that extra pawn pawn mass on the queen side proved actually kind of useful eventually and that was a a large winning factor it seems in my view so it does seem as though the Moroxy bind to unbind can create potentially losing concessions for the flower of the black pieces so it's still alive and kicking the old Moroxy bind um so credit to Jenna Moroxy Moroxy okay if you want to check out my new course at Udemy, Kings Russia TV slash Opening Tango, it's doing well, good rating. A lot of students are accumulating. Bitly slash Leela Chess for, for Leela playlist. Bitly slash Stockfish Chess for Stockfish playlist. Kings Crusher TV slash Discord for a chat. Bitly slash Chess World or Kings Crusher TV. If you want to register there, I'll be able to invite you for a game. Five days a move. Okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, subscribes with that notification bell. Really appreciate it. And the pop trivia question, question, do you prefer cats or dogs? That's the critical thing. Okay, thanks very much.